Once again, if you're just with us, please turn off your cell phones, et cetera, et cetera. Tim, give us an overview, please. Well, we, we just got a very good start from uh, a very good pitcher. Um, in order to beat those guys, you, you have to be able to command your fastball and breaking ball and, and keep them off base and not give them anything extra. I, th I thought Kumar responded to this challenge uh, particularly well, and especially once he got done with the first inning, he runs on first and second and out and got us deep into the ball game. Very impressive for sure. And then uh, the back end of that game, getting those seven difficult outs was, uh, uh, you know, Tyler's outing was, was equally as impressive at the end. It's, it's tough to shut them down. You can feel them coming, but uh, he didn't allow any uh, base runners. And uh, at the end, got the last three outs. And of course, Scotty's hits were, were with a difference in, in the ball games in terms of our scoring. We had opportunities early. We didn't get a timely hit, um, but his his first home run kind of broke the game open. I thought JJ's uh, double uh, in driving a run in was was big for our kids, and, and then certainly uh, the ball that that Scotty hit out. But we played good defense behind our pitchers, and um, we just moved forward. Okay, we'll start questions for the student athletes here, and we'll start here, Joe. Uh, Joe Healy, Baseball America. Stephen, how good did it feel to come out and do what you did today, given a little bit of a tough game first time around against Louisville? Yeah, it felt really good. Um, you know, we, we went into this game confident with Kumar on the mound, and, and, you know, he really showed out. And that's a pretty scary team, top to bottom. So, you know, we're looking to give him some run support. Adam Sparks of Tennessee and for Kumar. Um, nobody else here has pitched in Omaha immediately after throwing a no hitter. You have. What's that pressure like of carrying that into Omaha? And what did you do to prepare to follow up a no-hitter throwing in Omaha for the first time? Yeah, the no-hitter. Um, I had I moved forward from that. I couldn't think of that while on the mound. I knew if I went out there and tried to win, that things would go good for me. And with Steven at the plate and JJ's cat, catching fire, it was, it was a good game. Kendall. Kendall Rogers, D1 Baseball. Kumar, how did you kind of feel about your stuff and what was kind of your approach against that lineup? Um, I think they were sitting curveball, of course. I mean, judging by the last outing. And then I just tried to move the fastball around a little bit and still had some success with the curveball. And just working some change-ups to the lefties as well. Chris Lee was aiming for stop. Um, Steven, uh, walk us through those two home runs. Were you sitting on a certain pitch there? What what happened? Um, not necessarily. You know, uh, the, the second one runners on first and third, I was just looking to get a barrel on the ball and uh, hope, hope for the best. And so, like I said, we were trying to give Kumar a little run support. We were pretty confident up one to zero. But, you know, at the same time, we, we were expecting that they were, they were going to push. And, and they ended up doing that. And Tyler came in and shut them down. Jocelyn. Hi, my name's Jocelyn Stamp with Sports, Sports Illustrated Kids. Uh, for Kumar, what advice do you have for kids who are facing a pitcher like you? <laughs> Oof. I say to sit fastball. Like you throw my fastball and they sit it, they should have success with it. Okay, here. Max Herz, 1025 the game. For Tyler, you're warm getting ready to come in in the seventh inning there, just waiting to come out the bullpen door. How badly did you want to finish that one off, no matter how many outs were needed? I wanted to really bad um, because of last year. We all know what happened, and I feel like. I needed to do it for my team, and I was excited to just to do it for my brothers that were behind me. Chris Lee at Vanity Sports. Kamar, you didn't work as quickly as you did last week. Was it the heat, or I mean, you were still <laughs> pretty good in spite of that, but what was up with the pacing today? Because it was a little different than what we've seen. Um, yeah, being in that environment, to be honest, after the first inning, I looked at Phil, I said, all right, I'm good now. but. That first inning, yeah, I was, I was a little bit zoned out. I had to take my time, get my feet under me, and just kind of just start cruising. And it took me a little bit to do that. And I wanted to definitely focus on pitching with that lineup, top to bottom. Yeah. Matt DeMarinus, White and Blue Review. This is for Kumar. Uh, Mississippi State calls, says you throw a slider. You said a curveball. Um, wh what makes it so effective, I guess, is the question. Oof. You got to ask Duke and State that. I couldn't tell you. I just throw it. It's, it's got some good spin on it, I can tell you that from the fall. Tyler, when, when you 
when you come in that early, you're not coming in the ninth, you come in late in the seventh, how does your job change? How does your approach change knowing you've got to take it a little longer? It doesn't change at all for me. Um, I just try to do it pitch by pitch and again for the brothers that are behind me because they give me a lot of confidence and I have a lot of confidence in them and I'll go to battle and it doesn't matter how long or <laughs> how many pitches, I'll do it. For Kamara, a long layoff since that last start, and then it gets pushed into extra day. What did your last week and a half look like in terms of throwing, especially when you're also coming off such a heavy outing last time? Um, right. I mean, the staff, the training, the trainers, just they're with me the whole time and just stretching, just moving the body around, staying loose. That was really the key to it. OK, more questions for the student athletes? If not, guys, you're excused. We'll see you on Friday afternoon. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Let them clear. OK, Kendall. Baseball corps. Just looking at Steven Scott, he's a guy that hit with some power, obviously, last year, but he's a much more consistent hitter this year. What have you kind of seen in his development over the last year as a hitter? Zone control. Um, I, I just think the ability when they get older is not to uh, overswing and recruit power. Uh, I think he's tempered that. I think he's uh, more compact than his before he enters the zone with his bat. Um, he's a strong kid, but he's shown the ability to hit both sides of the field. Um, he's just been consistent throughout the year. Uh, this is the most consistent he's been. But when you start piling up the bats over time, then you start becoming more experienced, and uh, he, he's done that. Adam. Tim, you can tell by Kumar's body language, he's really wanting to move beyond the no-hitter. Uh, we talked about that the other day, how he would handle that. What? How did he handle that, moving on from that to pitch well today? Well, he handled it well. Um, you, you never know, and you go into this situation. Um, I mean, a lot of that talk is, you know, it's barbershop talk. So, it, it, you know, you got to – the only thing that you can do is control – what, what's possible for you, and he, he did that. He, he was f in full control of his workouts leading up to this. Um, he, he's been very, very consistent throughout the year. He's a very impressive young guy in terms of his training habits and uh, his, his maturity and how he approaches the game. And to his point, I think once he got by the first inning, I, I felt like, okay, he – he, he's going he's gonna to pitch well. Uh, it, it's, it's very difficult to get on the mound for the first time here in Omaha, especially for a young kid. But I thought he handled himself appropriately and very well. Okay. Matt? Tim, stuff aside, um, what are the intangible parts of what Kumar brings to the table that allowed him to handle the stardom of throwing a no-hitter when you guys are back against the wall and then coming here to Omaha and being able to pitch so effectively against a really dangerous lineup? I, I just think he competes very well. I think when it gets down to it, when you start to see guys that back up performances or become consistent, it's all about competition and their mindset inside of competition. He, he said it, and he just wants to win, and that's what he does. He approaches the game that way. There's no pomp and circumstance. He's not, he's not trying to uh, posture. He's not trying to do anything but get out there and, and compete. And he's a very good competitor. He loves to compete, and he loves these moments. Um, so I, I think that that was it. What he told you was true. I mean, I, I didn't speak to him this week because if I spoke to him, it would be different than how I approached him or handled him during the course of the year. If I'm going to speak to him, I'm going to speak to him within the team. But uh, we we moved from that as quickly as possible. The only time that gets brought up is from the questions outside of our circle. Uh, but he, he did a nice job. Adam. Uh, you brought Raby in. Uh, there's one scenario where you say uh, if you need a fourth game before the championship series, maybe Patrick starts that game. Can you walk through kind of what your thinking is in the long term of, of pitching Raby today and maybe not having him if you need him for a fourth game? Well, it's all about winning today. I mean, this is such a crucial game for so many different reasons, and we, we've just, we're going to utilize whoever we needed today in order to win that game, whether it was Raby or whether it was Hickman. 
we just wanted to piece that together. But as we got deeper into that ball game, we, we knew we were going to hand the ball to Patrick and at some point get Tyler in the game and if need be, um, you know, potentially throw Hickman or one of the lefties. But it, it, there, there was no long-term plan. You've got to be very short-term in, in this particular situation because it's all about today. Joe. Given that he spends every day in the lineup with, with J.J. and Austin and what they've done this year, do you feel like with what Steven's given you is a little bit overlooked or, or underappreciated nationally? No, I, I don't. There's not one person on the team that's overlooked. They're, they play their part to the best of their ability. They know who they are. They've got good awareness of their skill set, and they stay in their lane. No one's overlooked. They're all good players. Okay, any more questions for Tim? Oh. Max? What was the approach for you guys against Plumley, and what impressed you about how early you were able to chase him and get to him? Well, I just think not trying to do too much. I mean, he's a, he's a very good pitcher. He's crafty. His, his ball sinks. Um, we had to get him up. We had to get him over the plate. And we really had to try to use the middle of the field the best of our ability. Um, I thought we were OK. I, I can't tell you. Walk away from that one. And you know, we, we certainly had some good swings, but uh, we we didn't we didn't overwhelm him. Uh, I thought he did a nice job, uh, but uh, we we just had to get him in the zone and, and try to use the middle of the field. Okay, this will be the last question. Uh, Evan Bland, Omaha World Herald. Hey, coach, you touched on it a, a minute ago there, but just could you maybe speak to the importance of this game uh, and how it sets you guys up for the rest of the tournament going forward? Well, it just sets us up to get to Friday. I mean, I think by winning this game, we just don't have to play Thursday. And, you know, I think Chris would, like any other coach, you look at day by day by day. We just move the tournament to Friday. That's all that matters. Um, so we're, we're not thinking ahead. We're just thinking and preparing for what we've got to do. We just wanted to be successful so we could keep our pitching staff together. Okay, Tim, thank, thank you. you. We'll yeah. see.